Hello guys, welcome back to Christina Kings. If today is your first time of coming across our channel, please subscribe to this channel, hit the notification icon so that whenever we post a video like this, you'll be the first person to see it. Okay, um, for those of you that didn't listen to Peter B's um interview on Parallel Facts today, being 28th of May 2023, here is the the interview. Take your time to listen to it and um, make sure you share this um this video to your loved ones to all the obedience family share it on facebook and whatsapp everywhere and make sure you follow this um channel for more updates thank you um i think uh we have a couple of questions from the comment section um so we'll be engaging that way um allow people who allow comment questions from our people down there they really want to talk to you but we have close to over thirty five thousand people listening to you now so in case you don't know. Um, that's I have to ask people on Zoom. Yeah, people and on they, Zoom. They're telling me that I've abandoned them and went to this them, Twitter. Let them stay abandoned. Let them stay abandoned. They, you, you have you have done so many Zoom meetings in the course of your campaign. You've never had I was, actually, I was actually with them until the uh, people said no. What I was struggling with you, I was answering them, but now and uh, they feel very abandoned. Let okay, them, I'm waiting. Let them stay abandoned, sir. For the, for the moment, you have, we have tried having you on this Twitter space for a very long period of time. All through the elections, we couldn't. So, I think I just rushed out down to our... I'm not hearing you again. What is happening? Can you hear me, sir? Can you hear me, sir? <laughs> Hello, sir. Can you hear me, Hello? sir? Can you hear me, sir? <laughs> yes, sir. I can hear you, but... Uh, they said I should abandon you people. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I can. <laughs> tell, tell them that he's the president of 200 million Nigerians. They'll have to be able to share him, please. <laughs> <laughs> they, said, they said I should leave you people alone. The next time. Yes. So, I agree. I agree. So, let me be. Let me and these Twitter people continue. Thank you, sir. So can you hear me now? We are trying to find out the moment. What? It's still a conversation that I... It's a conversation about two of us. Both of us are going on together. So I'm listening to the questions. All right, sir. Can you hear, can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Okay, let's take the next speaker. Let me take bring in Savik now. Savik, you can ask a question in a minute. Um, then I uh, will we'll take... Oh, our ladies dropped us. So let's take Savik in a minute. Mr. Mabatunde, you come after Savik. And Savik, have the minute, please. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Sorry, Saddam. If we can work on the timing, one question per person. We have a lot of questions. Thank you very much, His Excellency, for um, giving us this opportunity to interact with you. Uh, one of the things you said during the campaign, which actually uh, galvanized a lot of us, is that you told the corrupt establishment if they can find w just one corrupt case where you stole money, that you will abandon your campaign. The recording is fast. Thank you. Technical uh, hitch that we found. We've not been able to have. Yes. I'm listening to you. Can you hear me? Okay. Now we are, we are getting an interference from the others from the Zoom meeting. I don't know if you could. Okay, don't worry. I'm going to ask them now. One of the things that you said that captivated a lot of us is that you led the establishment, the corrupt establishment, and you told them if they can find out one thing, one corrupt case against you, that you are going to. Uh, abandon your campaign and up to this moment even as we're talking right now they've not been able to come up with one single oh, thing to actually indict you with okay. and uh, yeah. because of that yeah, yeah. what they have actually embarked on is actually going around with misinformation yeah. propaganda and a lot of uh, you know uh, going after your personality to see how they can actually go after you and this is not really a question. What I'm asking is that with all this barrage of misinformation, barrage of propaganda, barrage of, you know, going after your person, you know, are trying to make sure that they degrade you, you've actually kept the energy level even far better than what we saw during the campaign. 
We've seen you engaging with Nigerians. We've seen you engaging, you know, talking to a lot of people, trying to motivate people, even engaging with the so-called politicians that are actually, they were actually against you during the campaign. So I want you to talk to us. What exactly, you know, is the brain behind, you know, this kind of, you know, uh, uh, mercy and this kind of grace that you have? Because for me, someone like me, I would have broken down by now, but we see you standing every day and still talking to the issues that are actually affecting Nigeria. Tell us what is actually behind the grace that you have. Wow. Thank you. My brother is very simple. If you live in a system, I said it before, where you can see in pain and everything, people going around trying to live a life where life can be better. I met a mother who told me an interesting story. She had a daughter who was sick. The daughter is sick. She's not working. The daughter is in hospital. The daughter is 17,000 naira. He cannot afford 17,000 naira. So, he, she's prepared to sleep with somebody if the person can give her 20,000. So, he, she's prepared but was lucky to meet a foundation being run by a good Samaritan, a good Nigerian, who listened to her story. She was sleeping with her, was able to pay her 20000 and decided to pay her the daughter's school fees to a university. This story is abound in Nigeria every day. Because people are jobless. People are not doing anything. And you know you can help. Why can't you help? That is the energy. That is why I go around I go around in schools. I go around everywhere doing that that's why I go about doing that and going everywhere. So, my dear, it is an, it's a difficult thing, but it's something you can do without. Can you hear me? Yes, I go on. All right. So, the challenge, if poverty you are seeing in Nigeria can be reversed. This underdevelopment you're seeing in Nigeria can be reversed. It's something I've experimented in the private sector, in a public sector as a governor. If you know what Anambra used to be before my predecessor came on board, for by me and see today it is the far worse. I know we have one or two challenges now which I know the new governor is grappling with and trying to deal with head on in terms of insecurity. But I assure you it used to be far worse than it is today. You know it used to be far worse. We started changing it and everything so it can, it can be changed. By the time young boys don't go to school here any longer, all the schools were girls. The schools were dilapidated. The schools were not anything to But we can um, change it, and the story is all on the positive side to today. So it can be the same thing can happen nationally. It is something the country can be changed. It used to be a beautiful country where people had hope, had everything. So I know it can be safe with All right, thank you very much, sir. Um, we and me, 
I think we have me someone you know already, but we have me. Let me allow you come in in the next one minute. Thank you. Hello. Is she there? We have me. Are you there? Well, let me let, let, let me ask, ask you. Hello, sir. I want to ask one question again. There is something that these elections exposed to Nigeria. Can you hear me, sir? Can you hear me, sir? I can hear you. There is something this election exposed to us as Nigerians. It exposed the amount of illiterate people that are in this country. I don't mean the amount of people that went to school. I don't mean the amount of people that are quote unquote educated. I mean the amount of illiterate people in this country. One of my biggest fears is these people seem to have been given the realms of power. We've seen what happened in the last administration when you put square pegs in circular holes. If there is any governor in this country that can beat his chest and say, I took education in my state from 26 or lower 20s, almost 30 to number one, it is you. Please, sir, what do you have planned for education in Nigeria? From bottom all the way up possibly to adult education because I even feel some of our adults are not yet lost. There is problem with cognitive dissonance. There is problem with drawing parallels, especially when explaining issues. Some people have an, a problem with being given facts and figures right in front of them and they cannot assimilate this intelligently. What are your plans for education in Nigeria? on all levels and for all facets of Nigeria, sir. Okay, let me, let me ask you, let me tell you first. You must understand that there's the only three things that differentiate developed and underdeveloped nations. It is not too many things. It's just about three major issues. Number one is education. If we prove that more a, a more a society is educated, the better the development. Because all the foundations which you talk that develop the society, science is about education. Technology, all this is about education. Whatever, they were talking, they were talking about STEM, science, technology, engineering, mathematics, all, it's all about education. If you're going to do construct big and better buildings, it's about education. If you're going to talk about infrastructure, it's about education. So, the foundation of development is education. The other one is health. You must talk about people's health. When people are healthy, it contributes to their productivity. It makes them contribute more. And you talk about pulling people out of poverty, which is the capital. So, education is critical. The only reason why Asian countries, even than African countries, is that they invested in education. There's only China, Vietnam, all these countries, the, the, the level of education is better. And that can be seen, very simple. If you go and compare all these countries with Nigeria, say in the 80s and 90s, they all have the same level of human development index measurements. They were at the same level. They were all low. Most of them today have moved to high, medium, less, like China, Vietnam, and other places. And that make, makes them more productive. So, for me, education is critical. When you see people coming here, and I'm talking about, uh, uh, with respect, consulting, Bridge, 
fly over airport and I love. That is not the issue. These are things that will come when you do the foundation. The foundation is education. The foundation is number one education, number two education, number three education. Unless people are educated. So if you're talking about infrastructure, the number one infrastructure you need to develop a society is human infrastructure. Because that's what will make them develop the right character, values, attitude, and everything. You, somebody talked about the issue of empowering those, or what you mentioned earlier about seeing the literacy in Nigeria. What you see, it happened, for example, in Nigeria, is that in a case of where, personally, I'll use this very often, and people don't understand what I'm using, is a case of where lunatics took over the asylum. So those who are not supposed to be role models, who are not supposed to be part of society, have become role models. So it's easier for me to now move around, and it's like that in every part of Nigeria. Not just in one place, you know. So you see somebody without a daytime job, driving around with several vehicles, it is the only place where you elect somebody like me is a governor, suddenly we move from not owning a house to owning several houses, buying several cars, even possibly flying around in, in private jets and everything, and I've been celebrated because the system has been criminalized. And you must ensure that you revive that situation in that society will develop. Because what did it do? Such such which is around corruption kills entrepreneurship, it kills professionalism, it kills hard work. And that's what we are faced today. And it's like the election now becomes government because it's now a criminal enterprise becomes a place for gangsters. And you know when, when gangsters do anything, once they capture it, so it is about state capture for personal benefit. So the gangsters capture it, they don't care. And everybody's jumping to it, you know. You become the old man out. That's why I said to the obedience, let's peacefully, in an organized manner, going through the law, remaining law abiding, be able to deal with this situation. 